Welcome to another episode of the Transfer Marketplace where I help you identify which players you should buy for your FPL team. In these videos, we have a look at the best defenders, midfielders, and forwards to buy based on their expected points in game week 33 and all the way through until the end of the season. So you're picking the best players, not just for this game week, but players that you can hold now until the end of the season. If you enjoy these videos, please drop a like on the video. Subscribe as well if you haven't done so already. We're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers before the end of the season. We're only 200 short of hitting our goal. So subscribe if you haven't done so already. And let's see which players you should buy for your FPL team. Starting with the defenders, and it's pretty straightforward. Right now, whether you've got your wild card, your free hit, or whatever you, chips you've got left, you want to be building towards a defense of Reese James, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Ken Sello. And you can throw Robertson, Rudiger, or Laporte in there as well. It's difficult to fit all of them because of their price, but I think the three main defenders you want in your team is Reese James, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Ken Sello. You can see that they lead the way for expected points between now and the end of the season. Reese James almost matching Trent, despite being 2.2 million cheaper. The concern with Reese James, of course, is his expected minutes, but when he does play, he does score big. Cancelo and Robertson, fairly close as well. There's a slight saving going for Cancelo. Of course, you can cover the Liverpool clean sheet with Trent. And so I like James, Trent, and Cancelo as the top three defenders to own. And then it's basically down to your budget and your preference for which of Robertson, Rudiger, and Laporte you add to make that an awesome foursome in your defensive line. There's some cheaper options there. Ben White, the best, under 5 million. Now Matt Doherty is injured and out for the rest of the season. In midfield, a lot of managers are thinking about how they can afford to bring Son into their team and almost have three premiums when you've got Kane, Salah, and Son in there. The reason why I like having Son as your third premium is that he allows you to go to someone like a Bruno Fernandes if you wanted to do that in double game week 33. Manchester United might have a double in 34 as well. Or it might allow you to go to someone like a Kevin De Bruyne with Man City's fantastic fixtures to finish the season. Having someone like Son in your team is a really good placeholder to go to another premium midfielder for things like captaincy or double game weeks, if that's the way you want to play it. Of course, you can downgrade to someone like a Madison or a Harvey Barnes. They're both great options. At the moment, expected points are telling us that Madison is the better pick over Harvey Barnes. And I think that kind of runs true with what we've seen recently. They both have had a rest, but Madison is probably the better player and he is the better FPL asset. Harvey Barnes isn't too bad. I've got Barnes in my team. I don't think it's worth making that sideways move. I'm not sure I would double up as well, but if you don't have a Leicester midfielder, I would be going for James Madison. Odegaard is there, just 5.5. Martinelli, great value as well. But I think that we're going to start moving away from the Arsenal midfielders and having someone like Saka, I think, is sufficient. Wilfred Zaha should not be forgotten as well. Crystal Palace have some great fixtures, and they also double in game week 37, I believe, if not 36. So they do have a double game week to come. We've got Mason Mount and Havertz there from Chelsea. Mason Mount reminded us that he he does have a fairly high ceiling in FPL with 19 points in game week 32. So the Chelsea assets are there. I'm not sure I would be jumping on them just yet. Look at their expected points in 33, quite low, but they do have a few double game weeks to come. So there will be a time when we look to get these Chelsea assets into our team. But for now, I think looking at the likes of Madison and Harvey Barnes is the way that I would go. I wouldn't want to sell Salah unless you've got that wild card there in 34. And I really like the move of bringing Son in if you can afford it. But it looks as though it's going to require a fair bit of surgery for managers to get Son, Salah, and Kane if they don't have the wild card. Looking up front, it's really difficult to pick forwards this season. Harry Kane is obviously the standout. Lacazette, a few managers still have Lacazette in their team with an expected points of 
seven this game week. I don't know if I'd be selling Lacazette this game week, but he's someone that I would definitely look to use as a cash cow to try and reinvest that cash into midfield or defense for one of the other transfers that I've already mentioned. Ivan Tony, despite not having a double game week, his expected points is very close to the likes of Ronaldo and Lacazette. So Ivan Tony just 6.8 could be a great option, but it feels like a little bit of a waste of a transfer to bring in Ivan Tony with no doubles now when we only have six or seven transfers left before the end of the season. Timu Puki, he's someone who does have a double game week to come. He's just 5.9. Of course, Norwich are not a great attacking team, but if you want to make a saving on someone like Lacazette, I think you could do a lot worse than going for a Timu Puki or even a Mateta from Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace's fixtures are really nice. I've already mentioned Wilfred Zaha. I think Mateta could be a decent option for Crystal Palace with their double game weeks to come. He's not completely nailed. Patrick Vieira does have quite a few options to choose from up front. But at 5.3, with an expected points total above the likes of Broya and Chris Wood, I wouldn't be distracted by going for Chris Wood this game week, I'd be more looking to bring in someone like Mateta. Chris Wood is expected to score eight points this game week, but if you don't have a wild card, bringing in someone like Chris Wood feels like a transfer you want to reverse at some point this season. And with so few transfers left, we can't really afford to be doing that. So up front, it looks like Harry Kane and then two cheaper options. Maybe you go for a Pookie. Uh, Broya or Mateta, or maybe you just drop all the way down to someone like a Sam Greenwood from Leeds or Gelhart from Leeds as well. So those are the options up front. Slim pickings at the moment, but I think if you spend the funds wisely up front, it allows you to reinvest that in the rest of your squad. That's the Transfer Marketplace video for Game Week 33. Make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe as well if you haven't already, and let me know in the comment section below what transfers are you going to make for Game Week 33? Are you going to be bringing any of these players into your team? Thanks again for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.